morning, everybody. I'm just wondering how much rain did you get? Did you get flooded? Nobody? You got about one inch, one, one, 1.4 inches here in town. But I talked to somebody who got five, right? It's a lake. That's a lot. But uh, what a blessing to get all those uh, moisture. I'd like to welcome each one of you, especially our guests. And I'd like to welcome Jackson James today. He's going to be baptized. And uh, Constanze is going to talk about how messy family, family life can be. Um, in accordance with today's gospel, Jesus acted like a normal, typical teenager who pretended, pretended that he doesn't know his parents. Does it ever happen to you? You dropped off your children at a school event and they pretended not to know you? It happened to me sometimes, not so often, but sometimes. Please rise for the confession and forgiveness, which is found on page 5 in the blue hymnal on page 5. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God of glory, God of peace, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back. We looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away and you are made new. So be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may move around and share God's peace. Let's peace you. song today is number 14. We have come into this house, number 14. We have come into this house.
please turn to the prayer of the day, which is found in the celebrate and serve. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ, who turns death into life and defeat into victory, increase our faith and trust in Him, that He may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And I'd like to ask the Entringer family to come forward for the baptism. Jackson James, what a great name. Um, and I'd like you to follow us on page 228. If you could present Jackson. Thank you. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Jackson James baptized into Christ? So please say, I do. The next chapter is about um, many promises that you make and responsibilities and so as you bring Jackson to receive the gift of baptism you are entrusted with some responsibilities like bringing him to church participating in worship services teaching him how to pray I'm wondering do you pray with him already sometimes when you take him to bed for instance or when you have meal times um, just being involved in the Christian church, that's what we ask you. So the question is, do you promise to help Jackson and James grow in the Christian faith and life? Please say, I do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Jackson, Jackson James and his parents in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. Please say, I do. And people of God, that's our congregation, do you promise to support Jackson James and pray for him in their new life in Jesus Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Please rise. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God's Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated again. The Lord be with you all. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be, be given honor and praise to Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. At that point, we are going to baptize him, but I have to pour the water in first to make sure that it's not too hot. I was taught that he likes baths, right? He likes water. Let's see. So if he's crying, then it's me, not the water. Jackson James, I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Jackson James with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Jackson James, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever and ever. Amen. Wow, he just slept through. Is he always so peaceful? <laughs> no, what I really like is compared to Emma, his haircut is much more developed. <clears throat> How old is he? Six weeks. Six weeks. Wow, he has more hair than Emma. <laughs> I'm getting jealous. Yeah, more hair than me. Thank you. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Um, before you leave, I wanted to give you this. This is a um, reminder of his baptism. Should I give you this? <laughs> and um, please use that candle you could celebrate his baptism like a birthday every year, make it special, make something like a favorite meal or something for him. Just talk about the meaning of baptism. It's another great reason to celebrate life. And then we have, I'll give you this too. Somebody? <laughs> Thank you, Gansen. Did our babysitters come? Did his brothers, her brothers show up? Good. Finally. And this is a... So a um, symbol of God's love. It's a quilt that we made for him. I don't know if you want to. Yes. <laughs> and I think the papers are... You have the papers? Okay. And some papers are for the sponsors and some are for yours. And I can take him now, if you don't mind. He's really well dressed. <laughs> The little cloud? Okay. Thank you. And what is coming next? I forgot. Offering. The offering. Yeah. And could you turn it off? Uh, my microphone? Is it your celebration book on page six?
Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, um, chapter 3, verse 8 through 15. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard, you, the, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this? that what is this that you have done the woman said the serpent tricked me and i ate the lord god said to the serpent because you have done this cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will strike your head and you will strike his heel the word of the Lord. The psalm is 130, the refrain is 130 verse 7. I will read the light print if you will read the bold and then we will read the refrain together. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. If you were to, if you were here to if you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is steadfast love. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits, in your word is my hope. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. Wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is steadfast love. The second reading is from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 13 through 5, 1. Just as I have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord, Je the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, and for what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Jesus went home and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Bezebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. 
but no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying, tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven by their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated and let us join our voices to sing Jesus Loves Me as we call the children to come up front. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, I saw some of you looking curiously at the rocks. Remember, that's why you got to pick up pop rocks. And if, if you need another reminder there, I think they're in the office now on the counter there. This summer, Trinity rocks, which means, yes, we really like it here, but it also means that this summer you are to bring rocks back from places that you go. Now sometimes the rocks are too big to pick up. Then what you do is you have mom and dad or whoever you're with take a picture and then you can send it to either me or you can have mom and dad post it on Facebook, whatever works best. Or if you want to print out a copy, you can bring that too. So please remember, we like a big faith mountain because Christ is our rock and our salvation. So don't you all forget about that. Now. I have a question. You know I like questions. What can you see on here? A hippo and a tortoise. Nope, actually he's not eating it. Here's the story. It's a true story. The hippo's name is Owen. Oh, okay, I can't send it through then. You can all look at them. Now the hippo's name is Owen. And Owen is actually a hippo. I don't know what the baby name for hippo is. Calf for cow. Okay, it's a baby hippopotamus. There's probably a proper term for it. Well, Owen was with his herd, and I don't know which country in Africa, but he was with his herd when all of a sudden the rainy season started in Africa. And the herd was kind of stranded, and poor Owen was actually stuck in the mud. You might know that hippos don't really have long legs. They have rather short legs. So he, yep, you know, don't you? Yeah, pigs have short legs too. See, it's kind of like that. You're right. And so he was stuck in the mud, and his family could not get him out. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And so what happened was the herd needed to leave because that's what they do, and they needed to leave Owen behind. Well, thank you for rangers. Even in Africa, they have rangers. And the rangers came, and they rescued Owen out of the mud. But they could not find his herd anywhere. So what they took, did is they took him to the wildlife refuge. And that's where he met the turtle. The turtle is not a baby. The turtle is actually 130 years old. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yes, the turtle has a very African name which I am unable to pronounce, so we'll just call her Mrs. Turtle, okay? Now, the turtle immediately went up to Owen, and Owen went up to the turtle, and they are inseparable. Do you know what inseparable means? They need to be together by choice all the time. And so the turtle 
became Owen's mom. She teaches him all sorts of turtle things because that's what turtles do, right? They do turtle things. He's trying to, to pull his head back. He doesn't have a shell, but he loves his mom, his adopted mom, just dearly. There actually is a first reader's book on Scholastic, so if maybe that's when you go back to school, don't hurry into this, I know. There is a book on Owen's story. I, I um, actually ordered it, but it didn't come on time. Well, what does that tell us, and what does that have to do with today's gospel passage? Well, Jesus says, whoever does what God asks to do is going to be my brother and my sister and my mother. So God says, actually, that all of us are brothers and sisters. So you could call me sister. See, that's sometimes why I call you sister when you leave church, because that's what we are. You are actually my sister in faith. I, don't, I never, ever had a sister. So it's kind of cool. I have a whole church full of sisters. Isn't that kind of neat to think about? And you can teach me all sorts of things that you do in your family that I don't know about yet. And I try to teach you some things that I do in my family and certain things we do together. Now, good thing you have your sister's leg to hold on to. Now, for the adults, I like to give you some food for thought. And even for you, I like all of you to pray about this. As we were at the Synod Assembly last Friday, Saturday, we heard from Lutheran Social Services. And right now in South Dakota, we're really short foster families. That is a real dire need in our state. And I like us to all take time to pray about that opportunity. It's not, I, I'm telling you, it's not a cakewalk, okay? But it's worth your time and your gifts that you have to share. So I like us to pray. I like you to leave. I leave you with that thought of pondering. And if you like more information, come and see me after I get back or call Lutheran Social Services. It's a great opportunity. It is, isn't it? Can I fight for that? There we go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you make families in all sizes and shapes. When others say, ah, that won't work, you say, yeah, that'll work. I'll stick them together. And it's only working because of the gift of the Holy Spirit that works in us and our hearts so that we can call each other brother and sister in your name. Amen. Thanks, friends. You rock too. Don't forget to bring your rocks. So when I come back, I like to see a basket full of rocks. All right. You ready to sit back down? How about that way? That way. He even wears his sister out, I think. Better take my candy with. No candy for communion. Oh, yeah, send the picture around and look at it. True story. You can read about it. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, we're in anticipation of a big trip. Um, we're ready to go uh, shortly, and it's kind of fun. I, I wish I would not, I would be a better picture taker so I can get my parents' face when they first get to see their last grandchild, we're thinking. <laughs> Pretty soon we'll knowing. So we're kind of ready for family time, but I can also tell you that by the time we're done with family time, we're ready to come home. And there are times, I don't know how about you, but there are certainly times when we ask the same question that Jesus' family asks in the Gospel passage, especially when I meet my brother. And I think more so that that's what crosses his mind when he meets me, is a lot of times she has gone out of her mind. I'm the baby in the family, so I can do all sorts of crazy stuff and get away with it. One that comes to my mind, and it's the time of family reunion, so maybe you have similar experience where you're thinking, are those really my relatives? And then you're reminded, yep, they are. 
A fun and little reminder of that is actually a, a woman I held very dear in my heart, and that was Dirk's aunt. Um, we got the privilege of living with her together in the same town and sharing lots of time with her. She was a life wire, she really was, and she happened to be the twin sister to Dirk's dad, who I never met. So I just got a little bit of a glimpse if you ever wonder where Pastor Dirk gets it from. That's a mild version of his aunt. So when my mother-in-law, who's very prim and proper, if you haven't met my mother-in-law, she's a lovely lady, but she's very prim and proper. If you haven't met her yet, and then know Aunt Gertrude, you can only imagine what can happen when those two come together. So as we, my mother-in-law would be visiting us in Heidelberg, and Aunt Gertrude would be invited to go along for supper. We would be driving in the car, Pastor Dirk would be driving. My mother-in-law would be, of course, sitting in the front, driving. She would be the real driver. And then there would be Aunt Gertrude and myself in the back seat. And my mother-in-law, I promise, all the way to the restaurant, would give Aunt Gertrude, who neared 90 at that time, instructions. Now, Gertrude, you're not going to dance on the table, you're not going to tell jokes, and you're not going to be too loud. You're not going to smack, and you're going to use your fork and knife properly. This lady was close to 90 years old. Of course, Aunt Gertrude, when you're that age, you get senior privileges, would listen to all of this, calm as can be, and you would be sure that when she got to this fancy restaurant, she would do exactly the opposite. I saw her standing on the table. I heard her being too loud for my mother-in-law's taste, telling jokes, having a great time, and making wonderful memories with us. As we left, my mother-in-law would always ask, she has gone out of her mind. I am thinking, that if we listened to Jesus' relatives, that's Aunt Gertrude. And I think we all have an Aunt Gertrude in our family. It might be you. See, for my brother, it's definitely me. Is he trying to embarrass his relatives? Because we hear that they went out to restrain him. For people were saying he has gone out of his mind. Is he trying to embarrass his family by purpose? I'm not so sure. I'll tell you another story. This one isn't Pastor Dirk's family, this is actually my own family. My uh, mom grew up in Nazi Germany, of course. She was a little girl. She was born in 1936. And as my grandfather went off to war, and my grandmother, who worked for a Jewish family as a housekeeper, that was her main occupation, was a maid, to be a maid. It was my mother, my grandmother, who needed to raise the two kids alone. Needless to say that as a single mom for that temporary time, she would want everything to be calm and quiet. She wouldn't want people in town saying, have her kids gone out of their mind? Well, my mother is kind of a free spirit. And she did not care to, know, to join the Hitler Youth. That was not her cup of tea. She didn't like to march to the same drumbeat. She didn't care for the songs they all had to sing. She didn't care for the order. She wanted to be free. Well, that was not part of the plan. So every afternoon, well not every afternoon, but at least once a week, my grandma said, somebody from the Nazi youth organization would stand in front of her door. And every time they would come, telling them, or my, ma my grandmother, how my mother just not ever fit, and that she is not a good girl if she will not comply to the rules. My grandmother was always deathly afraid 
that they would take her with and she would never see her again. It was out of fear that my grandmother wanted to restrain my mother with whatever she could. It just never worked. So I wonder if my grandmother ever asked, how can I just contain her? Because the people in town were saying, has she gone out of her mind? Doesn't she know what the expectations are? So I think the family we encounter today in chapter 3 of the Gospel of Mark is a family that acts out of fear. They're not embarrassed, they're fearful to lose. Which mother wouldn't be fearful of losing their son or daughter? So why are they so afraid? Well, in three short chapters, Jesus has become a celebrity. He's healing, preaching, and debating the authorities. He has come out with a big bang. He came as an authority into the communities, and he got things done that others couldn't get done. Naturally, not everybody liked it and it caused all sorts of turmoil and strife. And so in today's passage, we hear the scribes. We hear the scribes are coming down, and they come down in two ways. They actually come down from Jerusalem to the countryside, which is actually going down the hill. That's why it says they're coming down. But they're also coming down in a more league-wise sense. They're coming down from being the big professionals in Jerusalem. What do scribes do? Well, scribes exercise functions that we could associate with lawyers, government ministers, judges, or even financiers. They're the big shots. They really call the shots. And they come down to the countryside where people don't know anything. To do what? to accuse Jesus of breaking the law by healing on the Sabbath, by not following protocol, on Gertrude, don't dance on the tables, because he eats with sinners, and by upsetting the local economy because he un exposes the unjust system that the powers at that time wanted to maintain. Do you think that the scribes world and the ground beneath their feet starts to shift. It's an earthquake that is going to take place right beneath their feet. So let me ask you, what makes your ground beneath your feet shift? What upsets you? What keeps you awake at night? What turns your world upside down? What makes you uneasy? Jesus' family is deathly afraid they will put him away. Just like my grandmother didn't want my mom to be seized by the Nazis, Jesus' relatives couldn't find enough duct tape to keep Jesus contained. Their hearts are beating a skip faster, and their blood pressure is raised. And in their hearts, they are asking themselves, will he say or do something that's compromising again? They sit there all tense. Just think about the moments that make your life all tense, where you just sit and you think, I should not forget to breathe. That's where we're at. This is just three chapters into the Gospel of Mark. So the houses are divided. We know about divided homes, don't we? Amongst families, communities, just think of the recent unrest in our own nation. People standing on two sides, literally facing each other. Baltimore, the town divided. And then the world. Living together, I think it's fair to say, is just a very hard thing to do. It's sometimes even physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally exhausting. 
I think it's safe to say that I only know a few people that thrive on division. I think I can maybe count three in my whole life I have met who thrive on that kind of environment. For the most of us, I think we like rather harmonious and uneventful lives. But the truth is that we are broken people and so are our family members, our community members, our church friends. They are also imperfect, just sorry to tell you, just as you and I are imperfect. So apparently we can't live without each other. We can't be perfect. So how do we handle division and dissent in our communities that we live in? Well, looking at Jesus in today's story, do you notice that he doesn't give in to that division? He doesn't let them pull him in. He just keeps his mission in mind. That mission that was instilled on him, in him, in the waters of baptism. You are my son. With you I am well pleased. I don't care if others think you are out of your mind. This is what I have called you to do. Focus on me. See, for most of us, tensions within the family occur maybe at holiday gatherings. And then you can avoid the rest of the family. But for Jesus' followers and rel rel not relatives, but followers, and for himself, that division was something that was going on 24-7, all the days of their life. Because once they left their family of origin and started to join the Jesus family, their families were wondering, did you lose your mind? Can you only imagine what those families said to the disciples once Jesus was crucified and everything was done and said? See, what's the line? We told you so. I never liked it when my parents used that line. I told you so. And now I find myself using that line. So Jesus never lets himself, allows himself to be pulled into that division. He keeps his mission and his focus on God's call. And then we come to this passage that just breaks a mother's heart, at least in my case. Jesus, your mom and your brothers are outside. And he says, who are my mother? and my brothers and my sisters. And he looks at the people in front of him and he says, those who do the will of God are my brothers, sisters, and my mother. Now one could say that's right, a stab, a stab in a mother's heart. But I read this carefully over and over again. I thought God does not, is not a God that wants to hurt us. What does he mean? Now you can take this interpretation as you wish, but for me what Jesus says, family is bigger. Family is bigger. I nowhere in this passage see anywhere that Jesus says the mother outside is not my mother. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say the brothers outside the door are not my brothers. He doesn't say the sister outside the door is not my sister. What he says is, who does the will of God is also my brother, my sister, and my mother. He makes the circle of family bigger. He claims the people that are around him as a support because life can get darn lonely. If it would be just for us five now, life would be pretty lonely. But because of you and the people in this community that we have come to love so dearly and around South Dakota and maybe even around this nation, our family has become bigger and bigger and bigger and it's a joy. Not all the time, but for most of the time, family is pretty big. 
Jesus said in another portion, whoever isn't against us is for us. He says it's not about status. It's not about bloodlines, what defines family for him. No. What defines family for him is when we do the will of God. So, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people who try to tell me what the will of God is. And I'm not so sure that it's always the will of God. So what is the will of God according to this passage? We don't know. We do not know. All we know that in the waters of baptism, just like Jackson this morning, we are called and we're asked to respond. What are we called to do? Well, Jesus says, come and follow me, is what he said to the disciples. Come and follow me. Come and see. Well, what good can come out of Nazareth? Just come and see. Well, what are we going to do? Just come and see. Well, where is this going to go? Just come and see. He has that focus on the mission. So in our call, he invites Jackson this morning, and he has invited all of us to just come and see. I don't know what God is going to call that little guy to do. You don't know. You have thoughts in your hearts about the will of God for him, but is that the will of God? Come and see. It's in the journey that Jesus is with them. So as we journey through the season of Pentecost, and as you return to places of worship to hear the word of God proclaimed, we will find out slow but sure what the will of God is for that particular day, for that particular part of the journey. So as you venture out into your summers, I wish and I pray for you that you hear Jesus say to you, come and see, for I will show you what the will of God is. You're my brother, my sister, my sons, and my daughters. I will lead you and be with you in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, we know this all the time, but at this time we sing Jesus Loves Me, number 115. Please rise. In cases of pastoral emergencies, please call the church office for the next.
pre -week. You can always call the church office, just that sometimes we're not there. And that will be for the next three weeks. Please rise as we sing together King of Kings number 93.